is the Will Clayton Church of Christ. This is September the 20th, 2020. Sunday evening message. Resistance and attack against Satan is how we gain the victory over him. James 4, 1 through 12 is the text. Resistance and attack against Satan is how we gain the victory over him. You resist him, then you attack. This can't resist. You resist an attack. If all you do in a battle is defend yourself, eventually the army gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then they overtake it. You have to defend yourself, then send out troops to attack because you're giving them time to replenish and grow. You can't. You give Satan time to replenish, he'll outgrow you and he'll destroy you. Let's look at James 4 and verse 1 to get started. James 4 and verse number 1. One. There's some unique things that we must understand. You cannot outsmart God, saying, I say, well, no one's trying that, but we are in action. We are. If we try to figure out a way of getting to heaven that He hasn't laid out, there's no way. From whence come war? That's His point. And fighting among you. So that's two. Wars and fightings. Now see, we're going to take a moment to take a look. We're not going to oversimplify the lesson. What does this deal with war? Someone said, well, I'm not in no war. I'm not in a military. Well, let's look and see what he's talking about. G for Greek, 4171. G for Greek, 4171. It means to bustle. Warfare literally or figuratively. So the, we get in wars figuratively. War of words, hatred and anger towards each other. A single encounter or a series like several battles or just one. Battle, fight, war. So you don't have to be a soldier to do this. You just need to be in God's army. Someone attacks you. Now you're in a war. Or you don't have to be in God's army. And you can still be arguing and fighting with people that you're at odds with. The Lord tells us to James. And fightings. That's separate. Conjunction always means something a little different among you. Come they not hence? He poses that question. Even of your lust that war your members. See, the, the gospel writers are teaching us that if you want to know how not to get glory and steal glory from God, to not be puffed up, and not to let others puff you up, here's the secret. Just teach what the Bible says. You can't lift a person up that comes in God's name. You just can't. Because when you try, we do like Jesus. We run for the mountain. Run to God's hill and hide. Because we're not going to let you make us king. It's going to be just a few that try. That. Anyway, you just after something you've done. But you got to just get out of that. Because it's designed to shine the light on God and no light on you. When he illuminates you, then you shine your light on him. Meaning you're like a reflector. You shine on him. So nothing goes in you. But if you start altering the lesson, so I say, man, I never heard no brother teach like that. I never heard a sister speak like that. Yeah, well, let's check and make sure it's still in the Bible. Or if it ever was in the Bible. He says, verse 2, you lust and have not. So you want it, you don't have it. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight, remember two separate words, and war. Yet you have not his reason because you ask not. So you bow to me and say, I'm going to work every day, man. I can't get here. What, what, what are you doing at work? And what are you going to do with the money when you get it? You know, you're sinning with it, you know. Like he talked about last week, the guy used profanity. I'm going to go, you know, and get blanked up. He's going to get, you know, sin. He's going to be so tough. Somebody's going to have an Uber. Take him home. <laughs> Some people you have to help to get in the Uber. You have to walk him. Sometimes two people come out holding him one arm. But you just hoping and praying, Lord Jesus, help me that they don't throw up in the car. Because this one is wasted. You know, and they get out and all they change and money and wallets, passports, everything. Oh, almost have a bag to put it in. 
hooking on their arm. You have to walk people to the door sometimes. You know, ring, maybe ring the bell and the people have to come out and get them. See, you, you can't do that. Is that what you're going to do with your money? Why would the Lord give you more? You'll kill yourself. Verse 3, you ask and receive not. Why? Because you ask amiss. Let's look up amiss. Because this is a critical. See, these words that say, okay, well, what are they? Well, somebody said, well, oh, Zan, we know what I mean. Well, maybe you do. Well, I want to look it up. Humor me. Let me look it up. Because I want to get the true meaning of the word amiss. He says, the word is G for Greek. 2560, G for Greek, 2560, 2560, badly, physically or morally. What you asking for is bad. Anyway, you look at it. Is physically bad? Lord, help me to go get this 40 ounce so I can get tore up. It's bad. Or Lord, help me to go listen to this false doctrine message so I can get tore up spiritually. Amiss, it's the thing you ask for, you ask as a person diseased, evil, grievously. Miserably sick, sore. You ask miserably, you know. It's like you ask a miss, you know. You know, it's like you're mad at the Lord. You know, it's His fault. Oh, you know, oh, you hold, I'm trying to live for you. That's why I'm down. Because I'm living for you and I don't have nothing. Help me, Lord. I don't have nothing because you're like miserable, man. My goodness, what? And giving you nothing. That's what it's dealing with. Why? That you may consume it upon your lusts. What you want. You adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that the friendship of the world is empty with God. So this isn't just a literal adulterers with man and woman. This is dealing with a idea of God like Satan or demons or man. Remember something. There is no Cheon. That's a made up thing by man. God doesn't make up Chemosh and then present him and say, hey, you can eat everything you want, but don't mess with Chemosh. That's man made. Man makes that up. He makes up false gods and false images. So what you're worshiping is actually a man, but he's not the image of the man. So he shows you a god maybe with big dragon teeth or something. You might say that's comical, but that person have a wad of cash in his pocket bigger than your fist. So he's, it's not like he's not eating. He just worship something false. We went to a place the other day as I was sitting out that was a cleaners. And I could see through the haze of the glass there's an idol on her. And I'm guessing it was probably either Hindu or Buddhist. So there's a couple of candles there or something. There. So when you walk into his place, he don't have no picture of what some claim it's Jesus, whether it's Afro Jesus with blonde skin or light white Jesus, blue eyes and long eyes. He don't have none of that. He got a picture of a fat belly Buddha or a skinny Buddha. Or he's got a picture of a Hindu, Vishnu with several arms, a couple of candles burning off some fruit. He like, you know, this is what I believe. This is my spot. You don't want to come up in it. He's not going to move. They say, well, I can't come up here and bring my clothes if you have that. He'll tell you, I'm sorry, goodbye. Because I got a wad big as your fist. And I'm getting it from this thing up here. That's what he feels. So we have to understand that's adultery and adulteress. Those are, you lay with an idea. For the female, for the man, you lay with an idea. That friendship to the world, in with God. Are you lay with an idea of promiscuous sex? I just basically have sex as I please. One nighter, you know. I don't want to be tied down to no man. Man, I want no woman hanging on me, man. I, I move too swift. I'm a lone wolf. I picture a lone wolf on the back of their car. A wolf howling. You know, you know. But the Lord is saying, you land when I did that, that that's a, a opposition to me. Who said that for would be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So you become the enemy of God. He like targets you. This is my enemy over there. He's coming for us. Blessings are taken away. This is to the church, mind you. Do you think that the scripture said in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy? He said, you think it's just making that up? The spirit that dwelleth in you and I lust to envy. It's envious. It wants something else other than God. It doesn't, that scripture is just, just written. It's fact. But he give it more grace. Why do we need grace? Because God gets tired of us and silliness. You need grace. You need grace Grace was given to Christ and mercy. Why? Because 
He was looked upon, not because of sin, he was looked upon and favor was given to him. A way of escape. Certain people liked him, certain people didn't. When it was time to kill him, he got out the way. When it was time to kill him, he couldn't get out the way. The heart was turned away. It's like Herod became kind of fond of John. So he started tagging him about his relationship. I don't know what to do with him. Just put him in jail. But unfortunately, problem. Because that girl got him to dance. So he's not given grace. Because God didn't let him escape the sin that if he don't do nothing else, that's going to cost me a soul. The taking of the life of an innocent man, John. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud. So he resists. He goes against the proud. But give it grace unto the humble. So you, you receive grace. To the humble. The proud, he resists. So when you're asking God for something, you're proud, he, he backs up. Mm -mm. See, a lot of times we have to check and see, are we not getting blessed? Some people try to judge you by what you get. And then they don't understand there's tribulation there too. If you literally looked at Christ's life, you would say, man, this guy is hated by God. Constantly hunted. A man of sorrows? What has he done? Nothing. Everybody talk about it. He splits up people that have been together for. He splits up families, man. I mean, my son got along good till he got hooked up with Jesus. That's what they would tell you in Jewish. Time. Started watching. He don't fish with me no more. Telling me I'm not going to heaven by me going bringing a calf to the priest. I taught that boy that. He got hooked up with Jesus, man. It's just not the relation, not the same. Jesus split my family. That's how he would tell you. You know, it's ridiculous. To think that Jesus was all like that. He was famous. They talked about it. But you got two different thoughts. All along the route. So he says. Submit yourselves therefore to God. So because of this. Humble yourself to God. Resist the devil. So that's what the message is about. To resist. And attack. So we deal with the resist part. And he will flee from you. See this. When he comes to you. Then you resist him. It's like an attack. So now you put up the defense. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. See now, look at us. See now, this this is important. Okay. See, because we want to make it like God come chasing us. Huh? See, this is why it's so important to study the Bible. God calls us. It's like a messenger comes. When a man wanted a woman, he did like Samson told his mom and daddy. Well, give me a woman. But son, we don't want to get you on. No, I want one of them harlots down there around the Philistine girls. I don't want them girls down there at church. That's what they went and got it. That's what he wanted. Uh, Isaac sent for Rebecca. See, the Lord calls you. But you got to come and draw near to him. Rebecca came in. Okay, and I'm going to draw near to you. If you go, he need to come talk to me. You won't be getting no message from God no more. Because he doesn't do that. A man might come chasing you like that, but not God. And the church is female. No, he won't do that. I said, I said, they didn't want to come? What did he say? Go burn down the city. That's what he said. Burn the city down. Because y'all want to come to me? Jesus said a story is told that there was a king that the people didn't want to rule over him. So he found out who is it. Kill him before me. I want to watch you kill him. He said, that's me. That's how I'm going to be. You're going to be killed before me. Jesus is going to watch the angels tossing us who do not listen on the earth into the pit. And then he's going to go and weed them out the church. They saw none of them get up there. He's going to watch. It gives the confidence and comfort to know. See, now I'm not in. I desire that no man get lost. I desire not to see somebody get whooped in hell forever that didn't want me to be their king. See, you won't hear this Jesus on the television. Joel Osteen can't afford to teach about this Jesus because this costs thousands of members. But I'm just a servant, so I don't have no church. So it's easy for me to repeat it. In addition to living, it's easy. So we see here. He says, you got to draw near to God. Then he draws, he calls. So he says, many are called. But few are chosen. What is the call? That's the same. Many are saved. But few are chosen. The Lord say to the times, I chose you. I didn't see him go pick Herod. We got to understand. See, we have to understand the gospel. That's not just the literal gospel call. He's talking about the call. The Romans 8 talks about the call. That's who Christ talks about. The called out from the world. Many come to the church. But then it gets narrowed out. 
because only a few are chosen. So remember that, brethren. That call is the same coming before the Lord. And he wants to know, should I draw near you? So you draw near to him, but is the heart broken? Is the spirit contrite? No. He's not going to draw near to us. Saul attempted it. But the heart wasn't right. The Lord said, I gave him no mercy. When the Philistines came and cut Saul's head off and lifted it off his shoulders, rolled with it all the way back to Philistia, and nailed it, hammered it into Dagon's temple, that has nothing to do with the image of Christ nailed to the cross. That's God saying, he said, I showed him no mercy. And he gave David confidence, I'm going to show mercy to his son. Not like I did with Saul. And the son he's dealing with is Christ because Solomon acted a fool with him. So see, when you see him talking about Solomon, some of the analysis are about Christ. Solomon built a physical temple, Christ builds a spiritual temple. If he sins, he will be rebuked. That's Solomon. Not Christ. Christ didn't sin. So you have to line them up. Probably, I know you know that. This, this is nothing new. And so he says here uh, that cleanse your hands. You sin a sin. So you draw near to God. He draw near to you. If your hand's dirty, he's not going to come. And purify your hearts. You double minded. So you, it's like the analogy of the, we talked about last couple of weeks. The king made a feast. The first group didn't want to come. So he said, burn down the city. I need some people now. I got my calf ready, man. It's time to eat. My son's going to get mad. So the, it was full. He looked, says, not enough. Then it got full. And he came in. It's, it's ready. The wedding is ready. He said, who is that? He don't have wedding clothes on. Bind him and toss him out. See, that's many are called. See, there we go. The others rejected it. This guy was called. He came in. Wrong clothes. Not the garment of Christ. He came in with his own clothes. Few chosen. He's not one of the ones chosen. So this is, this is why there's no such thing as one saved always saved. So what keeps us out? Dirty hands, which is metaphor, evil works, evil thoughts. A heart that thinks a certain way but you never know what it's thinking. But it's crooked. God can see it. And a double mind. See, James says a double minded man, when he asks for wisdom, he's not getting nothing. Like paper. James said, don't give him nothing. You know what James is saying? James is saying like Moses. God, do not accept Korah and Nathan's offering. Don't accept. James is saying, let him get nothing. And he's saying in the teaching, in agreeing with God, God, don't let him get nothing. God is telling him, write that because I don't want him with nothing. Because his mind is back and forth. One minute in the church of Christ, next minute he's talking about denomination. One minute he's talking about women are uh, upright, you know, they can teach. Next minute he tell a woman, don't question me. See, like that. Yeah, you know, one brother was report. Don't question me, you know. You know, for a man to tell any human, any human, don't question me about something you said about God. Now, you may say that if you're a person of authority on a job, but about God, you got to ask your question about God because the soul is at stake. It's not about money. It's about soul. Be afflicted and mourn. So here's an instruction. Be afflicted. Okay. Now, does this mean to beat yourself? That's why you got a group of people that go around cutting themselves with whips. They have lost their mind in the name of the Lord, so to speak. Let's see what James is talking about. James 4, 9. Be afflicted. G for Greek 5003. G for Greek 5003. To be wretched, that is, realize one's own misery. That's it. Be afflicted. See, he's saying, recognize you're in a miserable state. If you know, come up there all oh, acting crazy, recognize, man. You know, it's like a person. Sometimes if you go downtown Houston, that's just a litter of people. Bless their hearts. I'm not saying they living right, but they out there. And they're sleeping on blankets and the cold weather it's hot, walking around, drug paraphernalia everywhere. They come through there once in a while and clean it up. And you know, if you're a city that functions right, <laughs> Houston's not one of them. I'm sorry, say you know, I'm, it is what it is. That's a method of keeping that area together. But because it's them people, leave it. I mean, it's so horrible. It's like, 
If I was a mayor, there's no way my city looking like that. I don't care. We're going to move some funds around. I'm going to some, I'm gonna have some prisoners. If nobody, we're going to unload this jail every day. It's going to be a bus pull up. He ought to be able to figure. He figured out how to tell us don't go to church. Turn ought to be able to figure out how to get some buses out of jail. Guys sitting up there with socks on looking better than you and I lifting weights. You got some good muscle. Now you're going to come up and clean up out here every day. Another bus load. Clean it every day. Y'all got to move. Now you ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here and clean it up. And then every day when it comes down, to be a few of people. It's so nasty. And they're allowed to live like a dog. Even dogs, people don't let hardly live like that. And I'm going to listen to this guy by going to church. Him? And not just him, the lady before me was the same way, the woman. And the male before me, and it's always been like that. Pretty basic, and he was, it's just been nasty downtown. He says, don't give him money, because it's a place for him. That didn't change nothing. They know how to make money. They sell dope down there. You got prostitutes. Yeah, she'll go down there. She don't care how broke he is. No shirt on, whatever. You got enough money? Come on, let's go. I'm telling you what I see. Tall from the floor. Can't. Just, it's, like, it's like a war zone. You see big, pretty stuff and then tall from the floor stuff. And people are laying out there. That's what this is. And you wake him up. He smells like urine. She's half dressed, living basically out of garbage can. And you say, Hey, Ron, help you. I'm fine, baby. That's it. He says, that's what this world deals with. He says, man, you're afflicted, man. You ought to recognize you're miserable. You can't see your misery. That's what he told Lord. I see you're poor, wretched, naked, and you're blind. You talk about you all right. Girl, you talk from the flow up. Church of Lord, I see you. And more, he says, cry about it. See, this isn't controlling the emotions. It's like, what you're so happy about? Do you know you smell like urine and you're half-dressed? Your head is laying by an ant-eating old burger. And you might snatch that up and start eating in a minute when you wake up from your drunken stoop. You don't really, man, you need to be crying by you to be, oh, look at me. You're, I'm fine, honey. No, you not. That's when you know something wrong with you. See, they want to. Chalk it up to mental, nah. See, you know what the problem is? See, the mental box is actually a lot smaller than we've made it. See, because God looks at sin a whole nother way. A whole nother way. I use this analogy all the time. You found out a saint was taking his children, as Keith is talking about the people, sacrificing kids. But you found out a saint was in the group putting his kid in fire. First thing out of my mouth, he crazy with sin. Put a hand on the pockets, it's hot. He crazy with sin. I don't see him jumping. You see, did you see Manasseh jumping the fire? I'm with you, baby, and leap in too. He put them in the fire and step back. That's why God said you're evil. That's the difference. You know, I can tell somebody crazy when they start taking a knife and cutting themselves a report. Of a saint that was so high, he was cutting himself. The police finally roused him down. God bless him. You don't hear about that story. You know I did because it, it wasn't big to get on the news. This is a saint only known story. He had robbed the place and he had a knife and they didn't shoot him. He just starts cutting himself. So they risked their lives to tackle him, put him in the hospital. Guess what happened? He got out! Let to catch him again. Why didn't they just, man, click? Give me my Glock. Pop, pop, pop. Why didn't just shoot him? See, those were good policemen. And he do well to thank God that they came on the scene. Now that's crazy. And you know what? He was high on drugs. That's crazy. And when you come down, he not going to cut himself no more. You couldn't even find a knife on him. That's crazy. So drugs and alcohol, they'll make you crazy. When you come off the high, we know now you got to pray. Because you wasn't crazy when you got high. See, you, you know, it's hard to get high when you don't know what to do. You know, you, know, you get so high, you can't snort anymore. The thing go all past your face on your head, you pass out. You try to drink another shot of Thunderbird and it's a spot on your face and you pass. But when you sober, that's when you get high. You can't get high, high, y'all got me? You can't put a needle in your arm when you toe up. You got to be high, yeah, pump on let me get the vein right, man. I'm so not, yeah, but whatever you do, after, that's what we're putting you in jail 
for putting it in you. Not what you did after. For putting and then what you put in you before that, that's why we are holding account for what you did after. Perfectly scriptural. It's just a few of those people who are truly insane mentally. Truly insane. Just a few. Just a handful. Oh yeah, the numbers are very narrow because the rest are simply sinners. Simply sinners. So I say, I don't understand that. Now, Brother Gibson used to work with some people like that. Mitch, he'll tell you about it. They were acting crazy. Mitch worked a, a shift because he had that job and another he come in and he said, he said, he said boy, he's been acting crazy with us today. Y'all know Mitch is huge. You know, he, was young, he was even bigger. He's kind of slimmed down now, but he's even bigger. He said, man, I'll be working out. He said, when I get in there, <laughs> you know, Mitch was that head boy, hey, hey, all right, hold on. Oh, his intelligence level is off the roof now. In his pajamas, he sits down and he paints and he eats jello. He's all right, Gibson's in there. My senses have come back. When they go to jail, Come in with a suit like I got on. Sit there with hair slicked back. You the mother. Who could that handsome guy have hurt? He's a devil. Out of devil mode into sane mode. His lawyer talks to him. They commune. Even when bad things are said. Mm -hmm. But before then he was shooting up the joint. Grandma and brought him a suit. He looked like a prince. No. He's a devil. And they need to take that devil down. You know what God said about taking a life? In Genesis, the man who takes a life, I will require his life at the hands of another man. Yeah, God is God is the creator of the death penalty. So you got these bleeding heart places. Listen, you got two choices. You either lock him up for life or put him to sleep. Reform him. All he's going to do is act good till he get up. He's going to be eating like a fool again. Because, you know, it takes a lot to take a life. Y'all right? You got me? I said, what about Paul? Did he become a saint? Now, I'm going to tell you, if he becomes a saint, I got two thumbs up. I'm down. I'm ready to battle with him. No saint. You're in a denomination church? Man, y'all better watch him. I'll get loose on pastor and everybody up in there. He has the Holy Ghost. He's, he's trying to do a good game of front. The wife make a marriage before you know it. You come in there, head on the table, it's bleeding, children crying, big muscles, he's ready to whoop everybody. You don't get mad. Tase him, man. You better be, that's a nice cop that tase him. You know, policemen love their little kids. You know, they like to pick to see their little legs dangling hard. You don't want nobody, he don't want, you ask yourself, because you're a policeman, are you going to have. Watch this. Your children at your funeral or his children at his funeral. Think about it. Your children at your funeral for doing the right thing or his children at his funeral. You know, you know that answer. You're taking him down. So, you got to do it the right way. But no, 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 no. Listen. I got some relatives and I'm telling you, when I call the police on them, if I have to, my phone going off in my pocket, man. Y'all get him. I'm just calling when y'all got him. I've asked some relatives, like, call me when y'all got him. I'm not fixing it, man. I'm not going to jail or hell fooling with him. Why? Because it's unruly. Brother, you gotta understand something. The relationships you got on the earth now are temporal. Unless everybody going to heaven that you're affiliated with. So you need to understand that is a system here by God. If you are miserable, you need to be crying about it. And weep, mourn, oh, and weep, real tears. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to everything. You have no, the Lord is saying, you have no reason. What you smiling about? You ever did that with your kids? You come in, everything messed up. Somebody been acting bad. You go like, what you smiling about? I just picked, I just got a call from the principal. What you smiling about? See, we know we do that, see? Amen. There's someone you can see the reality of it. Armor yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. So he says, humble yourself. Act right. He'll lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. You're starting to judge God's law. I don't see how that's going to work. Like one guy said, man. 
He was an elder too. He said, uh, and wasn't here, thank God. Good guy, but he said, uh, man, to me, he said, like you take a life after a man kills somebody, that's murder too. I say, unless God says it's okay. I just looked at it. Man, you better watch your mouth, I'm saying in my heart. Who you think you're talking to? That's God law. I want another man to take his life. That's not just the law. That's the law today. Romans 13. I got a sword for me. I got a 45 with a row of bullets. Not to look like a cowboy, but to handle you. And I'm not carrying it because I want to balance my walk. I got it for you. If you act crazy. See, this, see, the world has become so unruly. You got so many crooked policemen doing damage. Let me tell you something. Only a few times the policemen go to jail. That's rap. That's rap. Because the case is so, what were you doing? We still got to look at what were you doing though. That's what they always look at. What was he doing? <laughs> he did what? Why you got to look at that? Because God is saying, y'all better handle him because I'm going to put him in hell. Somebody better reach him. If I let him go to jail and don't take his life. Brethren, life is precious. And you only get one life. You understand when you take a life, you have robbed any soul of the blessing God gave him. Race, religion, nationality, area living is irrelevant. No one gets two lives. You get one life. God takes that serious. You take that life. I'm coming for you. You can't say, well, you gave Paul. You're not Paul. Big difference. You're not Paul. That man or woman has a right to live to however long ago let them live. And do nothing but eat, sleep, and die. That's their God-given right. You're no judge, but he said no judge the law. The law is already spoken, man. The law, this law is before Moses' law. This is Genesis. You take life, I'm going to require life. If a beast take a life, I want, God said, I want him dead. Man take a life, I want to know why. For defending himself, it's my call. My call. If I want him dead, I'm going to push the pencil on death. If I want to span, because I might want to rescue him. I'm not, I might want to use him as an example. You kill him in jail. You know what? You know God know how to take life in jail, right? <laughs> you know you can die of cancer in jail. God know how to get you. to just strike you. So you, you thought you could kill him because you ain't like taking your life. No. You just die in jail. Get skinny as a bean pole and die. So you don't, you don't, you're already in jail. You don't kill somebody. somebody say, yeah, the prisoners get me. Yeah, God get them. You don't, you're, you're a criminal already with orange and slippers on. Who are you to judge anybody? Let's live your life right, man. While you're in jail, get a Bible and get saved. I go around being police for about need you. Got all kinds of stuff in jail. Sex with women, not men. Got all kinds of drugs. Got prisoners running the drugs. You got prisoners running. You know how silly prisoners are? Warns talking about, you know, he don't know what to do, he just let them do it. <laughs> Prisoners running in prison. That's, I'm telling you, man, this world is tough. And poor. We cannot do anything. Just, we can't even get nothing right. And then get mad when we say, if you go to Church of Christ, we can show you what to do. How are you going to tell me? Because we, we have the law with us. That's why. Verse 12, there's one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. There's only one. Who thought that just judge another? Who thought that judge's number? That's the way it is. It is what it is. Cast aside pride and sin. Go to church and repent from TV worship. If you do not, it will be to your ruin. Don't fight to gain stuff, but ask God for what you need. Then share with others. Stop talking about people and judging them unjustly. These are the things that we've looked at. Verse, the, the, this is the verses we looked at. Now, how do we fight and attack Satan? Love God above all and each other as well as your neighbor as yourself. Love each other and your neighbor as a saints love saints and your neighbor as yourself. Mark them which cause division in the church. Be obedient to inspire others to do the same. This is the most powerful way you can attack Satan. 
forgive another, and destroy Satan's device. Do we know that? Forgive people. And then you can destroy the devil's devices. Isn't that amazing that the Lord would teach us that? Look at Colossians chapter 2, if you will. Colossians 2. Look at verse number 1. If I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them in law to see, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, there it is, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. There's a lot of riches with understanding. To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the spirit, yet am I with you. The flesh forgive me, yet am I with you in the spirit. Joying and beholding your order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught about the end with thanksgiving. Be, be aware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after or according to the tradition of men, after or according to the rudiments of the world, and not after or according to Christ. For any who dwelleth all the things of God head bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hand, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That's like a body of sins that all surround your soul, and God cuts it just like the skin of the male on his genital. They cut that. That's an image God women were never cut there's nothing to cut it was always a metaphor teaching bear with him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and our circumstances in your flesh hath he quickened or made alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having spoiled principles and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge in meat or in drink in respect of any holy day or no more or of the Sabbath days. That's what he said. Don't let anybody judge you like that. Colossians 2, don't let anybody judge you. Look at 2 Corinthians 2. What is one of Satan's devices? Then we're done. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. This is his device. Look at verse number one. But I determined this with myself. So remember what we're wrapping up with is how do you fight the devil? You love. Colossians taught us. You love each other. Above all, you have to love the brother more. You love your neighbor as yourself. You mark them which cause divisions. Romans 16. The most powerful attack you can have is forgiveness too. One of the most powerful attacks. He says, but I determined, 2 Corinthians 2, with myself that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he that making me glad? But the same which is made sorry by me. He said, if I make you sorry, what I said is going to make me sorry. Nobody can make us glad. You know, I don't want to come heavy again. And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice. And you'll make me sad. Having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. What makes me happy should make you happy. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart I wrote unto you with many tears. Not that you would be grieved. But that you might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. It's like a parent whooping you saying, you know, baby, this hurt me more than you. That letter, he know, man, this was going to tear them up. But he wanted to know, do they love me still? Titus and I said, yeah, man. They say, thank you for the love and help. Sometimes he says something to people, he goes, man, you know, I guess that's it for us. I'm going to be friends. I'm gonna... And they call me, hey, man, I want to tell you, man, the things you told me, they cut deep. Man, I tell you what, that changed my life. He's like, wow, wow. But if any have caused grief, he had not grieved me, but in part. He said, if he grieved you, he's only grieved me in part, that I might not overcharge you all. 
Sufficient to such a man is his punishment, which was inflicted of many. Who is he talking about? The guy in 1 Corinthians 5. Slept with his father's wife. So that contrary while you ought rather to forgive him. So obviously he came. You wouldn't forgive him if he didn't change. That's ridiculous, you know. And comfort him. So you forgive me, comfort him. It's going to be alright, son. You can do it. See, you know, a lot of times we tell people don't do sins. You all understand why. You understand you have to walk back uphill again. As you're coming back, Satan reminds you, yeah. And you remember, huh? You remember what you did with your daddy, right? Huh? See, it's not reminding you. Remember how I broke grandma's heart? Oh, yeah. See, he keeps reminding you. Start those thoughts. Arrows start shooting your mind. So, Ted, don't do certain things because some people just can't come back. See, so with Christ, all things are possible if you listen. But the walk is more grievous. Why? It's heavier. You got the burden of, no, I didn't even have to do it. I remember when I did. He comes to my mouth. I remember I did. Man, I wish I was. Remember I said to myself, I wish I wouldn't do this, and I did. It's hard. That's why I say, don't go there. Because you might not make it back. He said, God, but I, with God, I think it's a problem. Okay, then, how about let's not sin? How about that one? See, this is, this is how you know saints can be so jokesters. They can really be jokesters sometimes. Some of the things that we say. He says here, Forgive him, comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. So if you make somebody more sad, see, some, sometimes parents are like, but I mean, kid, you know, like, man, it's like stuff you do, oh, man, you'd have think they went and cut off all the heads of the neighborhood, all the people's head off the way. You know, what did they do? Like, man, that's a lot of grievous stuff exchanged over that. Some people have different degrees of stuff, you know, that they put on pedestals, certain pedestal sin. But you'd be like, wow, that wasn't... It's like with the Lord, He forgives us for stuff. Then He goes ballistic on certain people for things that we might well go, man, that seems pretty great. Because His thoughts are different. He knows what He knows what that sin does to souls. He knows what that sin does to the relationship between you and Him. He knows, man, I just, I can't accept that. I can't accept that. Some people get more excited at a puppy getting kill than a human. You know that, right? A puppy. He took six puppies and put them in a sack and put them on our team. You mean he go and then you turn about you look at TV, somebody got killed, you know. You know, that's like that's pretty sad. He lost it over them puppies though. Something wrong with you, man. You don't know how to judge things. So this to such a man as punishment, he says, inflicted by many. So it, it did the job. Don't give him more. Wherefore, verse 8, I beg you that you would confirm your love toward him. Watch this. He's going to tell you why. For to this end, also did I write. I wrote again, he said, that I might know the proof of you. So I need proof. But he said, I have to prove to nobody. Yes, you do. Yes, you to the saints. Yes, you do. Whether you be obedient in all things. To whom you forgave anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sake forgave I it in the person of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his device. This is the device of Satan to not forgive, to keep pressing people. You know, you come to church, you come to church, and you did thus and such, just sit in the back, baby. Sit in the back, don't say nothing to nobody. Put your money in the plate, eat the Lord's supper, and go home. Be quiet. Don't say nothing. No, son. you all kind of sins flying around. You can't tell. Nah, mm -mm. that's too much sorrow. You, you're not functioning as a Christian. That's ridiculous. You might as well not come to church if you're going to do that. Because you're not accomplishing anything. That's like a person telling you, okay, you know, okay. You know, when you come home, since you did that, don't do nothing. Don't eat. Just sit down at the house. Why? Sit down in your room. Don't eat. Them. Man, you might don't come on. Stay around the way. If you act crazy with people like that, I mean, who else like that? Ridiculous world. Joke after joke told of people's silly statements in their heart. We cannot live like that. If you hear that member of the church, recognize resistance and attack. Have you attacked him? You may resist him, but did you attack? Are you attacking but not resisting? So you can attack. But not resist. That's like a guy going, you see these shows, he just run with one gun holly. Oh, I shoot. You know, you know how easy it is to shoot a guy? That's Hollywood. You know how easy it is to shoot a guy running with the, the most powerful weapon? Open it. You know how easy it is to shoot him? Just hide behind a rock. And he run, oh, I hear him hollering. 
I see a fire coming from the gun. I got it. Pop. I got it. That's not how you fight. Oh, pop, 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 pop. Man, you, you guys a new strategy. Go around and see a gun. You don't just run out there. Huh? You, man, your mouth alone tell us where you at. Forget you. That's what it is to attack and not resist. You have to know how to defend. Resist. He flees and then attack him. How you attack him? Loving and forgiving. Loving the neighbor. It's, just, it's amazing. See, God started not out there. He said, I know what runs the devil off, and I know what attacks him. Recognize, like Brother Kevin Green said, wonderful message. Uh, you're living below your privilege. You're not a member of the church. How is that? You have no access to salvation. You have no access to God. No protection. You're just out there bad. You're like that movie where they were, had a day of killing people. The purge. And you just walk out there and go, let's go get some soda from the store. <laughs> you're not like killing people out there. That's how y'all when you're living without Christ. Satan is out there ripping people up. You go, let's go get some sodas. You ain't no gun or nothing. You want to die. He's coming for you. You can't stop the devil. You can't even see him. So, Recognize Jesus died, buried, third day rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Recognize also the Lord said in Mark 16, 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. That's his promise. Two promises. One good, one bad. He can't do the good without the bad. He just can't. He'd be a liar. So it's got to be that way. Peter is asked, What shall we do here in the 11? You could have asked any one of them that, but they're teaching. First one's out the gate. And verse 30, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you. That's the answer. <laughs> None to discuss. In the name of Jesus Christ, that's how you get his character. You're placed into his character as a thought. He authorizes you on what to do. Receive mission of sins after that, and the Holy Ghost. He said, this is a promise. For the promise unto you and to your children, all that are fall, even as men of the Lord of God shall call. For many of the words that he testified and encouraged them, save yourself from this unto all which is pervert or crooked generation. Some might say, someone might say, well, I don't get in that part. I get into the part about love. No, no, that's like a God saying, like a fireman. Well, you know, I don't get into the thing of shooting water. I kind of bring sodas to the guys. Man, you don't pay you to be a fireman? You have to put the fire out. Yeah, you have to do that. Oh, you're not a real fire. That's what, it, that's what it requires. He says, For you, your children, all are five, even as men of the Lord God shall call. I mean, in other words, he testifies and curse to save yourself, which means they're all lost. From this unto all means the generation can't help because they're crooked. Then are they glad to receive his word? So you have to receive it gladly. First, you're sad, and then gladness is brought. Well, baptized the same day, 3,000 souls added unto them. Who has in the law? They continue steadfast in the apostle doctrine, fellowship, to walk in the light as Christ in the life. 1 John chapter 1. Breaking up bread and prayers. Acts 2 47. Who had? And the Lord added to the church daily. Such as she be saved. Not the deacon board, not the evangelist, not the elder. The Lord. So when the eunuch hears a message, he's excited. See his water. He's anxious. What the hell do you mean to be baptized? Say, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Believe what? I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's no man put that together in that order. That's the order. It goes every time. It's the order it goes. Nobody taught that. We teach that because that is the order it goes. That, now, if that wasn't in the Bible and it wasn't on about confess, we would just go, well, see, we need to come up with a way of acknowledging who you... No, the Lord told us by that example. We learn about direct command, approved example, and something inferred necessary. It is inferred necessary to baptize. You must have water. Every instance shows water. So it's inferred necessary. John used much water. Yeah, but see, that's John. We're talking about Christ baptism. Does he use water? You got some people that teach Christ baptism doesn't involve water. That's a lie. That's so ridiculous. Christ himself doesn't use water. We do. That's the difference. We believe that the eunuch says, I believe Jesus is God. The baptism seals him. He's safe. Paul says the Holy Ghost does something in the baptism. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit, there'll be the Holy Spirit. Are we all baptized into one body? How do we know that's the Holy Spirit? Ephesians 4. That's one spirit. What spirit is he talking about? not talking about the Dalai Lamas. God is talking about Jesus. The spirit Jesus uses, which is the Holy Spirit, which is a being and not just a way of thinking. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, whether you're bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Ephesians 4. Drink in the Holy Spirit. 
it says, 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the like figure, where to even baptism does also now save us. We don't even talk about no thief on the cross. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh. We know the water's powerless. But the answer, your soul, answer inquiring of a good conscience toward God. How does it get any power? Outside the parentheses is an example. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That action means something you see more about in Romans 6. Where is he at? Who's going into heaven? He is with God. The Bible talks about him being at the right hand of God. Ain't the thoughts and powers made something to him. You know, when you really look at somebody trying to tell you how salvation comes, it's just like, man, you have to really pray for strength not to laugh. And it's like, man, you have, you have no idea what you're talking about. None. All out of love, I'm not going to laugh. Because you you're trying to get me, but you don't know what you're talking about. Amen. So, Jesus gave us hope. Revelation 2.10. Behold, the devil shall cast some in prison. The devil can clamp you with something physical. A physical issue that just will not let go. Say so tribulation 10 days. A metaphor. Until his time. What God is saying. He's given a time. What he's saying. Be faithful to death. Because sometimes that time frame comes at a point where you're going to die. Sometimes maybe not. Sometimes maybe not. Faithful to death. And you receive everlasting life. If you want that, you can be baptized now. Call the number at the bottom of the message caption. Push the triangle. Call the number. Several numbers. You got to reach one of us. No matter where you live, we will find a church. If you're ready to get baptized. So you should be ready to be baptized after you talk to people. I mean, you all just get to a point. Man, you should be ready to be baptized. What else? Ain't nobody going to tell you nothing no different. You better be baptized. Somebody going to baptize. If you want to just debate, no, nobody going to debate with you. Should be ready to be baptized. Your soul is gone. That's a loss. But if you're here, stay standing when we sit down and be baptized. Off you're here, and you are walking contrary. You might as well just ask for prayer. Fix it. You may say, Well, I don't want to ask for prayer not because they're gonna think I'm walking contrary. No. You don't have time to worry about what we think. Ask God for what you need. Now we're together, we stand sing heaven's invitation. Be and tenderly, Jesus, call on, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, He's waiting and watch. Watch, you may be sitting for you and for me. Come home, come home.